So TikTok is in the hot seat right now. There's a lot of controversy with the social media platform, a ton of back and forth about the app being potentially banned in the U.S. Lawmakers are citing privacy concerns, saying they're worried about the Chinese government having our information. But a lot of the support behind this ban really comes from the mental health concerns and the addictiveness of the app. Now, a lot of people don't spend a whole lot of time on TikTok. So I have a couple content creators here with me today. They're going to join me and talk kind of about what the app is and why so many people are really on it. So let's first introduce you guys to Faith. And Faith, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do on TikTok? Hello, my name is Faith Bench, and I single-handedly started a trend that went worldwide because of TikTok. Basically, I brought awareness to sensory tools and fidget toys. I realized that if I needed and wanted them, that others would as well. Great. And this is Annie. Annie, why don't you tell us a little about what you do? Hello, my name is Annie Cooper. I am a fitness and health content creator. So a lot of workouts, workout advice, recipes, things like that. And I share with others to help them get motivated and get on track with their health and fitness goals. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So let's just get right into it. You know, what about this ban? Like, are you guys on board? Do you think that there should be a TikTok ban? Or do you think that this is just kind of a lot? Faith, you're shaking your head. What's up? <laughs> no, I absolutely do not think there should be a TikTok ban. Just So tell me a little bit about, you know, like I said, people are citing, you know, concerns over the Chinese government having our information. I mean, does that concern you at all? Or, you know, like I said, a lot of the backing is coming from the mental health angle. And, you know, your target audience, Faith, is, is kids. So, you know, are you worried at all about their mental health or their addictiveness of the platform? Well, that's kind of, there's a lot of, a lot there, but like with any social media platform, there are concerns about data privacy, security, Basically, I believe it's freedom of speech and it's this freedom of speech issue that infringes on millions of Americans' ability to conduct businesses regarding any potential bans or government interventions. I think it's really important that decisions are made with careful considerations of all the benefits and the risk involved. Regarding the mental health, yeah, that's important to me because, I mean, that's what my platform's all about, really. And also, mental health is so important. I'm a mother. I have children. Like, that is so important. But that issue about the addictiveness of the platform, things that you mentioned, that is not exclusive to TikTok. You could say the same thing about Facebook or Instagram or really any social media platform. They're all addicting. So, I mean, I feel like that's not exclusive to TikTok. But the educational of the educational aspect of TikTok is amazing and the community that you're able to build on TikTok kind of has been exclusive to TikTok like i feel like the the ability to build a community on TikTok is something that we haven't seen on any other platform so while the issues are the same addictiveness on TikTok it's a addi Instagram's addictive Instagram has so many mental health issues as well but like the ability to build that community on TikTok is has been incredible. Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting when it comes to the privacy, because when you sign up and you use an iPhone, for example, and you go to the Apple store, there's documents and documents of information that Apple says that they have from you. And I think the issue is that people don't care when it comes to TikTok is because we don't actually know what they are doing with our information. They could say, yes, we have all, all of your information. But I think unless they say, like, we are doing X, Y, Z with your information, this is where it's going. This is what we're seeing. We don't know that and we will never know that. There's a lot of things, obviously, that the governments know that we don't know. But at the end of the day, our phones are always listening to us anyways. And I think it's very easy for people to have information of us. And, you know, things when you talk about Facebook or Apple or things like that, they also are able to access some of our information. So I think obviously the Chinese government is a little bit different. But I think the issue is that people just don't care because they don't know exactly what is happening. Right. Definitely. Um, and Annie, you know, you do a lot, like you said, with like fitness and overall health in general. So as far as the mental health aspect goes, I mean, I do a lot of fitness stuff on TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're kind of pushing like, 
you know, it's addictive, but in a fitness sense. So we're like, hey, watch this video, but get out there and go do it. So, you know, as far as the mental health concerns go, how do you feel about people being on the app too much? Or do you think that, you know, it could be beneficial? That's what I think the main thing is, is the usage time is that people are spending so much time isolated on their phones, looking at content, comparing themselves, figuring out, you know, what they need to change in their life in order to have this life that they see of someone else online. I think that's the biggest concern is the comparison aspect and the fact that we are not getting out and doing things as much and we're spending way too much screen time on our phones or computers and tablets. And I think that is the biggest concern, but I don't think that the social media content in general is a concern unless you are, of course, having these comparison issues and it is ruining your mental health. But there are a lot of ways where you can fix that by kind of limiting your time online or unfollowing the people the things that kind of make you feel less than or make you feel negative but i think the thing with kids is the issue of they're not getting outside as much they're on their phones too much i've had clients where you know they tell me their kids need to be trained by me in order to just get out and do a sport and do something and get movement because they're just sitting on the couch on their phones all the time and i think that would be the biggest issue from what i see Right. So what I'm hearing is a ban is not going to solve any of these issues as far as mental health goes, because, you know, kids are going to be addicted to whatever social media you put in front of them. Um, so I think, you know, and as far as the Chinese government concerns, again, it's, you know, there's always some privacy concerns with every single social media app in general. So now let's say that this does get banned or, you know, there is a potential of it within a year. So are you guys doing anything to prepare for this ban? Do you want to go ahead first? Do you want to start? Well, not right now. I personally film and edit all of my videos in the TikTok app. It's just so user friendly. And so I have been downloading some other apps to learn how to edit in them and practicing. And it is just so inconvenient. But I want to make sure I'm practicing that just in case it is banned. So I'm doing little things like that because I do need to be prepared. But other than that, not really. Annie, what about you? Yeah. So one of the things with TikTok is I think if you do have a platform on there and you have a community, people are inclined to go follow you on other platforms. They want to see your longer form content on YouTube or they want to see your Instagram and see other sides of you. So I think a lot of the times on TikTok, people are going to follow or at least check out your other accounts. So I think there's a lot of room for growth on those other sides. The thing that people don't realize is how you know, influencers make money off of that. I've personally had contracts with companies where it's you're required to do a TikTok post and an Instagram post every single month. And that's on the contract and you're getting paid for those two pieces of content. So I do think with brands, of course, they may shift to something like YouTube, but a lot of creators do have their biggest following and biggest community on something like TikTok. So they are able to make more money from that. You know, I have people that are on TikTok full-time as their full-time income. And that's exactly how they make money every single month by doing that. So that would affect them you know, significantly if it is banned and if they're not able to use that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, people make money on TikTok. And I think kind of like you said, people don't really realize how they make money on TikTok. And like, Faye, something you said already about how user friendly TikTok is when it comes to editing videos. It's also user friendly when it comes to making money. Um, I think content creators, they make it so simple. They have that TikTok shop where it links directly to your account. You get paid per view. I mean, it's just you could make so much money from just TikTok. And I think that if they get rid of that, you know, they they're requiring ByteDance to sell to a U.S. company. But my thing is, why has a U.S. company not figured this out yet? How is there not, you know, Instagram, you can't make that amount of money on TikTok that easily. You can't edit that easily. So why is it that U.S. hasn't been able to figure out how to do that? <laughs> you know, and personally, I don't make any money on Instagram from like TikTok literally pays creators pure, poor, excuse me, pure, Per view. They pay <laughs> creators for the views on their videos. But you don't even have to be a creator. As long as you have like 10,000 followers, you're getting paid for the views on your videos. I don't get paid on Instagram for my views. So again, like TikToks figured out how to match like the community who wants to see my sensory tools, my fidget toys. They've matched them with me. And the community is incredible. And they're also paying the creators for creating videos 
They have that TikTok shop, which is incredible. It is so user friendly for businesses and for users. They, I mean, it's just, there's no comparison. And as a business owner, like I have over 1.3 million followers on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, but if TikTok's banned, I'm going to lose almost 5 million followers. And that would be devastating for my business really. And it's just, it's sad to think about. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, it's just, again, like if they sell it to a U.S. company, is all of that going to go away? I mean, you know, Annie, I'm sure it's helping you with your clients as well. And you know, again, they just make everything so user friendly. So I just I, I wonder what would happen if they sold it to U.S. company. Yeah, I think my only concern with selling it to U.S. company is the algorithm with TikTok is very different. And I think that's why it's so appealing to people is that TikTok is so different. The algorithm is sent to you in a very different way than Instagram or YouTube is. And I think my only concern with selling it to a U.S. company is that they might only know how to do one algorithm. We don't know. They might make the algorithm similar to Instagram and Facebook, which means it's going to be a little bit harder to grow because what people like about TikTok is if you have one follower, your video can be seen to still millions of people depending on how it does. So my only concern would be that the algorithm would be similar to where it's each platform is kind of the same. Yeah. And I think that that is a a great point you bring up. I mean, Instagram, I might get a thousand views, but TikTok, I might get a million views. And it's going to be such a struggle for not just content creators, but, you know, businesses who put content on there. I mean, it's going to be very, very hard to, like you said, grow and to continue having something so user friendly that so many businesses and people can grow and learn from. And I think that a lot of times the positives of social media get thrown in the dark and all of the negatives can kind of really just overtake it. But I think that we're highlighting some good ones. (laughs) Because again, from a, like I'm an entrepreneur as well. And from an entrepreneur view, if my customers don't know about me, then they can't buy from me. So the exposure that I've gotten through TikTok has been incredible. It's like goes worldwide. And I know that it's been truly life-changing for so many different small businesses, not just me, Like there are hundreds and hundreds. I get on TikTok and I see all of these amazing, inspiring stories about people whose lives have been changed because of the exposure that they were able to get on TikTok and how they're being able to provide for their families. And it's just changed their life for the better. Yeah. I mean, honestly, one thing I did even during the pandemic was raise and use it to give them tips. Like I would post a video and say, you know, look, servers are struggling right now. It's the pandemic. And it was a video that luckily could reach a bunch of people and people would donate again right through TikTok. And then you just, you know, cash it out and give them the money. And it's just, it can be used for such good things. And, you know, if we take that away, I think it's just going to be such a struggle because Instagram is just not, not as user-friendly where it is yet. (laughs) Yeah. And I think too, like, we can all censor our own information. Like I think what people don't know, or maybe they've noticed, but when you like a positive video on TikTok, it will show you more of that. So the more that you view and you like these positive and uplifting things, the more it's going to show you that. And that's one thing I love about TikTok is it doesn't need to be negative information that you're seeing. It doesn't need to be anything that you don't want to see. You can really censor it to your liking, to where it's things that are helping you. You can put time limits on it. You know, I do that on my phone where I have a certain amount of time on each app and I set it to that. And that way I'm off of it and I'm kind of seeing what I want to see. I unfollow all the things and I don't like the things that I don't want to see. And, you know, it's really providing me with helpful tools and information that I can use in my life. Yeah, that's also such a great point. You can literally set timers for these things. Like there are ways around it. But again, I think from this conversation and what I've heard from you guys, it's a TikTok ban isn't going to make all the social media woes and all the crazy things just go away. So, you know, really what benefit is it what is it doing if you ban TikTok? I haven't heard anything from you guys that says like, yeah, th- you know, this would be great if it was banned. <laughs> I think it's like everyone that, like in society, we all don't agree with it because we don't know the back end of it. I think that's the thing. Like, I don't want this to be controversial, but I think the government knows what's going on and that's why they want to ban it between them two. It's this whole feud. But for us look from the outside looking in, we're kind of like, why would this happen? Like I understand from kids and, you know, censoring things like that 100% and the mental health aspect, totally. I think we all kind of agree on that, but we're like, no, it shouldn't be banned at the end of the day. But I think that's because 
we don't know the full story. <laughs> I mean, that's really the reality. Right. But on the flip side, it's kind of creating a scenario where we become no different than the very authoritarian regimes that we're opposing. Like they're like, oh, scary China. They're using TikTok to influence American politics. Well, that same exact argument can be made about Facebook, Instagram, any other social media platform. But the U.S. government's not looking to ban the other social media platforms. So I just feel like, again, it's like the mental health issues. Getting rid of TikTok's not going to fix that. The same issues are on other platforms. Definitely agree there. And I realized that places in China have TikTok banned. Does that not, like, that's a little strange to me. What do you guys think about that? Oh, dude, which places have that? that? Like Hong no, Kong that. can't use it. I mean, wow. and it's like a totally different name. It's not called TikTok. There's restrictions on it. And I think that is so strange. I would be so curious if the government would give us more information about why that is, you know? We I don't know, does that flags to you guys? <laughs> It's all, I mean, I don't, I really don't trust any of the cell phone companies or the social media companies or anything like that, just because of, yes, we're posting all this information. They can see whatever they want. They can get any information that they want. I think the thing is, is that, yes, people just don't care that much. But I think if we knew exactly what was happening, we would care. But I don't, I don't think we're ever going to know that, unfortunately. Um, selling it to a U.S. company, though, I don't think is going to make any difference on what the, you know, what's going on with social media and our mental health. Absolutely not. Faith, anything? Kind of goes, I mean, it's sad that China, I mean, again, we're not fully educated on everything like she said, because they they feed us information the same, to a degree, the same way that China feeds. But I do think like it's scary how they, how China controls the information that they allow people to see. And that's scary, but that's what I'm saying. It feels almost like, that's what they're doing. Like America is trying, the government here is trying to do it, not nearly to that degree, but it's like, yeah, it's major red flags that China doesn't allow Hong Kong to view TikTok, right? But it's like, they're controlling the information that they see there. It almost feels like it's a slippery slope with the American government trying to control what we see here as well. I think teaching di digital literacy and other things would be better and let us control what we choose to consume. I think it's it could be as simple as a money thing. I think wherever attention and money is, that's what equals power in a lot of people's eyes. And it could be as simple as that. TikTok has a lot of attention more than any other platform, has a lot of money behind it and it's what people want to use. So I think seeing that it's it's power, right? So it's this thing that obviously the US government would want. You would want something that equates to power. Yeah, and that is such a great point. Wow, we have talked about so many great things here today and just discussing this potential TikTok ban and what it would or wouldn't do for the US, uh, mental health wise, security concerns wise, how we make money. Are there any final thoughts? Um, Faith, I'll go to you first. Is there, is there anything else that you want to add to this? I think at the end of the day, diversity and opinions are what make the world so beautiful. And I think that TikTok is an amazing platform for cultivating those communities and people being able to share their experiences and opinions. And I hope that it's not banned. And Annie, what about you? Yeah, I think the main thing to think about is that we control what we're seeing, what we're doing, what we're watching every single day. We are in control of our own life and what goes through our head and what we see. And I think if you have a an issue with social media or what's behind it, you are in charge of controlling that for your own life. Absolutely great. Well, thank you guys so much for your time today. Of course. Thank you.